goes through Never ever have enough time to play at all You know everybody wants to walk in someone else's shoes I've got all my wiring completed now for block detection. I've got my my layout editor pulled up there in JMRI and I thought I would just go through and show all the different blocks as they exist right now. So all I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna dampen my finger and and place it on the track and it'll create some resistance through me and it will it will show the different blocks. So here's block one. Block two. Block three. Block four. Five. Six, seven, and eight. And because I did have the extra channel left over, I went ahead and created a block nine on line 16. It's a little out of order as far as the computer is concerned, but uh, I think I'll be able to understand that and keep up with it. Now I'll do my control points. One, two, three, four, and you can see the, the small segment of track between those actually lights up as well because it's not long enough for a train. <clears throat> Five, Six and that length of track between those two control points also lights up. And then seven. And I, I've definitely learned some things with this. Uh, I probably would have done things differently had I understood exactly how to route the the feeder drops through the CT coils and also how it works within JMRI because I probably could have done this more efficiently with fewer CT coils than what I made use of uh, and that's something I'm going to consider you know as I move forward uh, kind of think about this a little more I'm, I'm not going to mess with it today because I want to get started on on actually making my my tortoises work because I've got my wire so I'm gonna try and get the tortoises going and also work on uh, getting my control panel with the push buttons working so that's what I'm gonna do now that I've got this kinda completed alright I've got a few of my tortoises in everything seems to be working pretty good now I, uh, I got the point three nine wire and that helps immensely. I haven't had any any problems with uh, throwing the switch point or the, or the throw bar up on top of the layout. So what I've got here is, is just kind of a jangled up mess. I've got an edge connector connected to a double pull, double throw switch and then just a, a cheap power supply uh, so I can test these without having to wire up the entire layout. Uh, just kind of makes things go quicker. And it throws it pretty quick right now. But that's that's my process for for checking and testing tortoises. I've got three in. Uh, I've got one and three more down at this end. I'll have a total of seven when it's all said and done. The tortoises are installed so now it's time to start wiring. Uh, this is going to be a little more complicated than what I did with a block detection so I'm going to attempt to explain this. Uh, 
So in JMRI, we're going to configure our push button to actually be an input and an output. Uh, there's a configuration in there where you can where you can make that happen to where I believe for 63 milliseconds it acts as an input and then after that it changes to where it's polling what's going on and if it sees a high or a low then it will act as an output so that we can actually either light up or turn off our indicator lamp okay uh, so that information gets relayed through this ribbon cable uh, and I haven't talked about the ribbon cable yet but it is it's a 10 line ribbon cable cable and the way RR circuits has designed this is there's four lines that connect to the lines in the configuration node and then there's another four that connect to the configuration node and there's two lines in here that is a plus five voltage and a ground so that you're always carrying uh, five volts everywhere you go with this ribbon cable and that's pretty handy the red tracer line if you can see it is always line number eight uh, the the plugs themselves they're they're pretty easy Let's see if I can get this to focus here they've got little teeth and you just smush them into the ribbon cable and I don't know if you can see that nodule sticking out that's what they call the key and the key will only fit into the plug one way so as long as you get your tracer wire in the same place every time and you know that it's how it's supposed to be and I'll, I'll throw up a, uh, a, a actual wiring diagram so that you can you can see how this is done but you know your your plus five ground is going to go out from this breakout cable this is coming from here to there or you can think of it as coming from here to there which it's a it's a two-way path but this breaks out and you're going to be running your your plus five to to the light and to the push button and your and your negative so that when they make that connection is made uh, by pushing the button all the magic happens <laughs> uh, and I'll say this about this particular uh, LED it's a 12 volt LED and I have tested it it works fine with 5 volts there is a built-in resistor in there I have no idea how many ohms it is I, I tried to do some research online couldn't find anything and another interesting thing about this is it doesn't tell you which side has the resistor on it so it's kind of guesswork and I'm gonna to have to go in and and apply uh, five volts to each one of these and then mark which side is the positive because you can't if you hook it up backwards you're not going to get a light uh, so that's going to be my next project is making sure I know which side of this is the positive which which should be accepting the positive line and which isn't now on the other side of the push button I'm also going to have to have a resistor uh, hooked to the ground uh, I think that's right again I will throw up a wiring diagram uh, hooked to the ground because there has to be a difference in in voltage the the node has to recognize some kind of difference in the voltage going both directions in order for the light to work and for it to work like it's supposed to within the configuration node uh, so there's going to be a little bit of, of wiring to do there uh, so you push the button it sends the signal to the tower controller the tower controller sees the event uh, and the way this is going to be configured is there's actually going to be two events one with the pushing of the button and one with the release of the button uh, it acts upon it then sends that information to the stall motor driver and then the stall motor driver then sends it back out through a ribbon cable 
to this breakout board and then these individual screws will go wires to the tortoises themselves. Uh, pretty, pretty simple. Uh, the only real trick is going to be getting the nodes configured properly in, uh, in the LCC configuration node and then making sure that JMRI is reading them appropriately. It's going to be a little more complicated than the block occupancy. Uh, and I probably didn't mention it, but these come configured from the factory already configured for block detection. Literally, it's about 10 mouse clicks and you're through. Uh, real simple for block, block detection with these. The only thing you have to do is create a sensor and add that sensor to JMRI so that JMRI can see what's going on in here. Uh, and another thing that maybe I haven't mentioned is once you get all this configured, you know, your push buttons and you got it all working at the tortoise and everything's jiving like it's supposed to, you can turn your computer off and, and unplug it. This is a microprocessor. It's going to retain all of the information that it needs to work appropriately, including the, the lighting of the, of the control panel. So you don't need a computer once you get it configured. You can completely do away with the computer and, and run trains as normal and not have to worry about turning your computer on. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get started figuring out <laughs> which side of this is, needs to take my positive and get my control panel all worked out and wired. So I've got my first push button and LED soldered in and wired up. Uh, so this is the ground wire, the green, and I've got a 1K resistor coming straight from the ground wire into the push button. Uh, on the positive side, 5 voltage, five, 5 volts are going through the red wire. It's going on this side of the LED, which, which this is the side with the resistor, through the LED to the other side of the push button, which is also connected to line one, which will then connect to the LCC node. Uh, I'm going to test this before I continue with all of the rest of the the soldering and wiring because I, I for sure want to make make sure that that this actually is going to work like it's supposed to because I have an unknown with this resistor in here and how it's going to coordinate with this resistor. They're supposed to balance each other uh, so I, I don't know I may actually screw something up royally here by doing this but uh, I'm going to try it and see if I get a light with my push button before I move on. I'm also out of solder so uh, I can't actually do any more wiring today because I'm completely out of solder so hopefully I can get some solder before the end of the week and finish it up this weekend. I'd go ahead and, and show the wiring going to the tortoises since I've, I've got finished with it, or at least with half of it anyway, give or take. So my ribbon cable's going over here to the breakout board, and then from the breakout board it's going to the three tortoises I have at this end, CP1, CP2, and CP3. Uh, you can kind of see how that's working. And then I'm also, I have not wired yet uh, the frogs. So, so this frog wire here will come down and go in here and then this is going up to the tortoise that we can switch the polarity when the tortoise gets thrown. Uh, CP1 is is good to go. I've got I've got the frog wired up on it uh, but that's that's basically it for the wiring for the for the tortoises. Uh, this one 
I had it wired up and I think my edge connector was bad. I think I had a faulty edge connector or maybe I missoldered it or something, but it, it is not working. It would not work. It worked with my tester, but it did not work uh, with the edge connector that I just created about 30 minutes ago. Now, back to this. Uh, it's been about a week since the last segment of video that you just watched and I tested it and I got nothing to work. My LED and resistor, resistor combination just is, is not right. So I got online, I tried to figure out how to calculate what I needed and asked a few questions here and there and uh, I ended up ordering uh, different LEDs with the same resistor, a 10K resistor and a 1K resistor. Uh, and that's what I've got in here now. I actually took out the LED from the, the bezel and desoldered and resoldered and, and created a, a whole new light bulb assembly within the bezel still doesn't work. <laughs> so I don't know that now the push buttons do. I can, I can flip this over and like here's, here's CP1. Pardon the quick movement. Here's CP1. The push button works fine. And if I hold I don't know if I can get this. If I hold, I'm getting a flash there. That's, that's interesting. I didn't have that before. But it should be steady on. Uh, should hit the button once and it should come on and stay on. But that's not happening. I'm gonna have to do some more research. Uh, <laughs> Definitely going slower than, than what I'd hoped, but I, I am still encouraged because uh, the push buttons work and that's, you know, that's gonna be the main thing. If I never get a light, I guess it'll be a nice story to talk about why do you have those light bulbs, LEDs in there and we can't look at them. But uh, I'm gonna call it, call it quits for now because I'm just gonna have to do some more research and figure out why, why my lights aren't working.